This is the Matt and Muse Show with Matt Hunsler and Adam Musinski. Uh, welcome back. It's the Matt and Muse Show. I am Muse. This is Matt. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Monday, July 9th. Got it off the start there. Uh, and it is hot outside. It is. We're getting a little bit later start than usual, but that's okay. It's little nice little man needed a haircut. So, dude, <laughs> he's had, he's 18 months old. He's had. A year and six months. Eight, 18 months old. I'm pretty sure this was his sixth haircut he's had. It's either five or six. Um, and they took a lot. It's probably two inches off. That's Three, impressive. He looks old now, though. He looks old? Yeah. Well, like, for a little <laughs> kid, like, he's not a little baby. He looks like a little toddler now. Yeah, he's which, a year and a half. 18 months. <laughs> but, hey, we got another one on the way in November, so that's exciting. Woohoo! Um, just had our 20-week checkup this morning. Everything is fine and dandy, so, yeah. It's exciting. What's new with Olivia? Um, Olivia had a, a doctor appointment today, actually. Um, she's in the... Uh, Let's see, she weighs 10 pounds, 4 ounces. Puts her in the 74th percentile, I believe. Um, her head is huge. I don't remember how big, but it's big. And uh, <laughs> she's 21 and a half inches long or something like that. So she's a big old baby. She eats constantly. She's a pig. Takes after her dad. <laughs> Glad I didn't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you guys. She's, she's sleeping better, which is nice. Most nights. Most nights. Last That's night, good. Not so much. Most <laughs> nights. Every other night, maybe? Uh, every third, third. Fourth. There you go. Once a week. That yeah, works. Better than Let's nothing. Let's be honest. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, for those who have been following us on Facebook these past two weeks, Matt and I kind of wanted to be a little more professional with our logo and not use <laughs> someone else's artwork. <laughs> so we uh, updated our logo and everything. Um, we're gonna, we have the ability now to blow it up. That was kind of our goal. Um, create some marketing materials. I know we've talked stickers, coasters, some T-shirts, stuff like that. Uh, just want to let you guys all know that is something we are working on. And we did purchase our own website address, uh, mattandmuse.com. Um, it forwards you to um, a site we use right now through Wix. Um, eventually, we'll get all that ironed out. But it's still under construction, but you can head there. It's got our uh, speaker player right on the home page. A little about us. Uh, Matt still has got to fill his stuff in. Sorry, um, everybody. It happens. <laughs> you got a newborn. I'll let it slide. Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, contact us if you ever want to get a hold of us. Um, and then uh, we're working on some sponsorship information as well. That'll be up there as soon as we get that all ironed out. So, yeah. So it's exciting. Um, you had a, a fun weekend, did I you not? I had a... Uh, horrendously warm weekend where I got burnt to a crisp, but it was a very fun weekend. <laughs> yeah, we we're supposed to do a photo shoot today, and Matt calls, he's like, dude, I'm red as a lobster. <laughs> so, maybe later. <laughs> I, I can see you guys uh, watching Facebook Live and watching here. My neck is glowing. Um, I'm red. But we were playing, uh, we had a fast pit softball tournament this weekend in Auburn, uh, the Auburn Corn Fest tournament, um, and we won it. This is our uh, Congrats. third attempt at it. Thank you. Our third attempt at it. Uh, first year we got second place. Awesome new team we already beat. Um, last year we got, I believe we got third place. Um, lost the team that won it all. Um, and this year we played very, very well. Um, we hit the ball well. And we took the trophy home, which was pretty outstanding. It was a lot of fun. We got another tournament this upcoming weekend up in uh, Petoskey. Uh, we won this one last year, so hopefully we can take it again we get two double headers between now and then which is going to really wear us out or make us really good so we'll see are you going to see jake when you're up there i'm probably going to see jake when i'm up there oh i'm so jealous i was going to stay with him but i end up getting a hotel room for me and a couple other guys so right maybe let's have jake come stay with us too i think he's <laughs> single this weekend he is single this weekend i'm so excited we're gonna get in trouble <laughs> 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 I'd say we'd want to like see what you're doing, but at the same time, you know, you don't probably know. Did, don't no, want to know at all. At all. Oh. So speaking of playing ball, um, Detroit Tigers. They suck. They are doing terrible. Uh, it's about my 100 loss prediction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking kind of good right now. Absolutely. Last night, they, uh, they got shut up for the 11th time this season, which is a um, 
leads the major leagues right now. Um, they currently are losing five to three, um, and they are third place still in the AL Central. <laughs> Surprisingly, the AL Central is <laughs> garbage. <laughs> Cleveland, Cleveland's way ahead with a forty-nine and thirty-nine record. They're ten games over five hundred, which isn't bad for this time of year. Um, next best team. 39 and 48 twins followed by a 40 and 52 tigers. We're bad. <laughs> it's the worst division since 1994. Um it's it's sad. I mean usually from the central you'll always have two teams fighting for the division title and then the second team still being in <coughs> excuse me the playoff race but this there's no chance of that. They're 20 games out of the wild card. No, it's unbelievable right now. I mean, it's <laughs> – there's no way. I mean, Cleveland would have to go an absolute suicidal downfall in order for the the Tigers to even make a chance to, to, to lead the division. I mean, it's it's bad. It yeah. really is bad. And I mean, granted, they are doing a lot better than, than I expected them to do. Oh, um, for sure. And they get a lot of young kids. They've had a lot of injuries. I mean, they – I didn't expect them to at least play as good as they are, um, but they're they're doing pretty poorly. <laughs> <laughs> we all knew that, and I'm sure Cleveland's going to go through a slump too here at some point, but not a three week slump by any means. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. That's all right. <laughs> I need a cough button. Um, <laughs> 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 but <laughs> the, I, what it proves is all these guys on the Tigers that are in their late twenties. If the right deal comes, you gotta sell them. I mean, it's it, everyone should be available at this point because if you're looking two, three years down the road to be able to compete again, this team of players who are 26, 27, 28, you do you want to keep them that long, waste part of their career, um, risk injury, and then you're stuck with them. In this way, you return them more farm players, and instead of being good in three years, four, three years, you're good in three years, four, seven, eight, nine years. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's they if they didn't have the inj- injuries to Miguel Cabrera and the starting pitching staff, um, I think I'd be okay having that amount of veteran leadership with all these young kids. Those guys are gone right now. So it's just a bunch of young kids scrapping and biting and clawing, doing whatever they can to try and win a game or two. Mm-hmm. Um it's not worth it. No, if, if not If somebody's at all. on a tear, go after, go after somebody younger. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're not that young of a team. People say mm-hmm. it's rebuilding team, and, and we're young. Yeah, we're younger than we have been in the past. But that's looking at teams with Victor Martinez and Justin right. Verlander, Miguel Cabrera. I mean, it's those are very very old guys. Mm-hmm. And in the past, we traded off young guys like J.D. Martinez, Rick Porcello, Max Scherzer. Not that young when we got rid of them, but mm-hmm. still. Um, Look how well they're doing on their own exactly. teams. Um, and we're getting all these prospects very, very young, very low in our system. And that's what Illich was trying to do, I think. When he was trying to rebuild this team, he was trying to, in his early years, he was trying, or excuse me, yeah, in his early years, he was trying to rebuild from the bottom. <coughs> up. In his late years, it was spend money, spend money, spend money. And he was gone. So young Illich comes in and he goes, get rid of everybody. Yeah. Let's start back. Start back. And that's what you have to do. The best way to... I mean, yeah, you can go out there and buy a team, but then you're going to have a $200 million payroll like they did and come up empty-handed. So why not take your time, do it right, get a good group core group of guys together, um, say, come on, we're going to go run with you guys, we're going to let it go. They were looking at the top 11 prospects in the farm system today for the Tigers. 11 of them are pitchers. Five, The top five are all pitchers. And four, <coughs> excuse me, four of them are due up next year back into the MLB. Yeah. So we're looking as early as next year to start seeing these kids. Are we going to win next year? No, no, by no means. But getting that MLB experience, those starts, going through those um, six pitchers and saying, okay, we have three starters, we got two bullpen guys, and we got a closer or something. And that's what we have to find out. And why drag people around that are just going to get upset when you're doing it? That's very true. I mean, as we're coming through this season, though, I mean, it's – First half is almost over. We're almost the all star break. Yep. Um, Tigers have one player in the team. Every team <laughs> in the every team in the MLB gets one player. Stupidest rule ever. 
no, 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 you're a stupid millennial. No, 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 no. Here's why. <laughs> here's why I don't think it's a stupid rule. Okay, I mean, well, I, I am all for the best players should be there. Mm-hmm. I and I agree with you on that part. I don't think it's a stupid rule because it's an opportunity to bring more fans into the game. So for, as far as it's smart, as far as bringing more money to it. I mean, if you have somebody from each team, you got some somebody in every major city wanting to watch that game, wanting to watch their one guy play. Are you going to sit through the entire game to watch Jimenez throw four pitches? No, I'm going to sit through the entire game because I like to watch the game. It's a stupid game. Didn't used to be. No, it never did. I just it's it's participation trophies. No, you're not that good. Your team sucks. You suck. Maybe you should get better. So here's why MLB All Star Game. Um, was the last great All-Star game. The winner of the MLB All-Star game, that league got home field advantage. No what? No, that's stupid. Why not? Why? Why? It's an exhibition game. So? You have people playing on that field that aren't even going to be in the World Series. Pete Rose ended a guy's career in an All-Star game. Yeah, well, he's a beast. No, he's not that big. He was just... Mean. Played like a beast. He did. I... I always liked the All Star Game for the home run derby and the game is cool. See all like the best of the best players go out. It's the way it is with all the All Star Games. I just think it needs to just keep being an exhibition, and you don't need to give every team a player. It's it's participation trophies. That's that's just the only thing I can think of it as. Is oh hey, we have to give this to you, so here you go. Did you deserve it? Eh, no, not really. But we have to send someone, so here we go. That's very true. Um, pitcher for uh, the Rays, Snell, mm-hmm. got snubbed. He absolutely did. Um, he deserves to be there. He's got one of the best records right now. Um, he's got a very good ERA. But you have to send everybody. Right. Or, excuse me, somebody from every team. Yeah. So, unfortunately, people like that miss the cut. See, and that's just stupid. It is. It is. It, I, I understand if your initial list people drop out. Hey, I don't, I don't want to participate this year. Thanks. Okay, yeah, then you go down the list. Then all of a sudden you're getting these guys that probably don't really deserve it. Um, but when you're already inviting those guys in front of, you know, pitchers and catchers and fielding players that deserve it, then I think it's a broken system. I was a little upset to see that um, uh, Castellanos didn't make it for the Tigers, though. Yeah. And well, then, and then <laughs> I looked at the outfielders that did make it for the AL, and he's competing against Mookie Betts, Mike Trout, Aaron Judge, J.D. Martinez starting, Michael Brantley, George Springer, Mitch Hanniger, Sin Su Chu um, on the bench. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he he's not going to see the field. I mean, he's batting like three oh two, something he's, like that. He's having a great 16, season. 16 home runs. But Sell him. Heard it here first. We should, yeah. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Why not? Sell him when he's hot. Get him this year. You can get three to four prospects. Exactly. Tomorrow. Get two, three prospects in AAA, AA, and get some other dude in low A ball or something or overseas and be happy with it. Yep. Absolutely. Get him to a team that's going to go on a tear. Take him to Chicago. So, you good? I'm good. Okay. We're, we're done with my, my stuff. You can get on to your stupid sport. Stupid sports. <laughs> um, the other season that just came and went in the last seven days, the NBA. Ugh. <laughs> so, as you guys all know. It's the uh, off season, so everybody talks about the NBA like it's well, cause, season, but continue. Well, no, because we now know what the standings are going to be and who's going to win. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. So, we it's, all know. It's a rigged league. I don't know about rigged. No, it's a rigged league. Might as well make that betting kick back in the NBA. They should. (laughs) Anyways, uh, LeBron went to L.A. Um, The only kudos I give to him for going there is he kind of just went there by himself and didn't drag anyone along with him. If you want to say Rondo and those dudes came with him, I no, No, come on. LeBron... I don't know why they signed him. I think it was because, hey, it's a decent player, and they're on a one-year de- <coughs> one deal. So screw it. If it doesn't work, they're gone. Um, but next year, you have Kawhi, Kyrie, KD, Clay, and Jimmy Buckets all going to be free agents. I think you'll see some of those guys end up there. Um, but it was weird seeing him sign four years after going one-and-ones in Cleveland for four, four, four years. Um, he just kind of went into magic and said, hey, I'm, I'm ready. I'm here for the long haul. Let's make it happen. 
Yeah, but uh, what I can see happen is um, he brings in who he wants. Oh, yeah. He goes to Magic yeah. and said, this is who I want, which is the yeah. same thing Magic did when he went to L.A. Yep. Um, I mean, it's going to be he's going to try and create this dynasty out in L.A. And then you've also got, in my opinion, it's a terrible move for him. Oh, you know, I think so too. Because he has to play, <laughs> he has to play much tougher teams, mm-hmm. much more frequently. I, I don't put him if if they make the playoffs. This isn't a certain thing now. I don't see them being seated higher than a number six seed. No. And in the Eastern Conference, your top three walking in with scrubs. Yeah, absolutely. He was seated. They were a six seed <laughs> this year, weren't they? Three. Were they a three? Yeah. Uh, Four. Three or four. Either way, they were but, low. Yeah. And they had nobody but him. Right. But now you're you're taking that low team that's basically the same team as me, him and Scrubs. Yep. Uh, and you got to play Houston more often. You got to play Golden State more often. Uh, who knows what Memphis is going to do? The Spurs are always good. Um, so, yeah. Looking at it, though, LA, when they made that deal with Cleveland at the trade deadline, they sent all their long contracts to Cleveland. Yep. And <laughs> Acquired all these expiring ones. Oh, hey, look, now I got room for LeBron. Thanks, Cleveland. <laughs> Dumbass. Zlat- <clears throat> Zlatan made the greatest quote ever about this. LA now has a god and a king. Zlatan. Zlatan. <laughs> Welcome to Team James. A <laughs> um, few little notes here I want to run through about this. Um, this, sh- this should have been the stat slash fact of the podcast. This is you, man. <laughs> Take your micro- your headphones off and drink a beer. Um, where was I? Oh, Luke Walton uh, is going to be coaching LeBron James. Luke Walton was drafted in the 2003 draft, 31 picks behind LeBron James. Um, well, I was going to talk to you about this. Will LeBron win a title with the Lakers? Never. No. Next two years is going to Golden mm-hmm. State, especially after signing Boogie Cousins. Um, and then you got to figure your so that'd be. 19 and 20, you're 21 or 22 is either going to go Boston or Philly. I'll give them each of those can fight over one. And I think Houston's going to grab one in the middle there too somewhere. So LeBron and LA, they're not going to compete. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Um, I like the signing for the Warriors of DeMarcus Cousins. Low risk, one year. uh, Veterans mid-level exemption or whatever it was. uh, 5.3 for one year. High reward. If he plays great for the half of the season he's going to play for him, you look amazing. Yep. If he comes out and flobs and sucks, cool, you only had him for a year. Yep. No one's going to blame you for spending $5 million on that. Uh, Mello's <laughs> out in OKC. Tony Parker went to the Hornets. Dwight Howard to the Wizards. <coughs> what does this mean for the rest of the NBA? They're screwed. Golden State's going to three-peat. That, that, that's all it is. No, big surprise. The, <laughs> right. We didn't know that was going to happen. Right, right. Exactly. Now it's just more certain than it was. It was 99%, now it's 100. No, oh, it's down. And yes, they're the best in the West. Oh, for sure. East. You got to go Boston or Philly. Let's see Boston at full strength. I think Boston My will money's be in Boston. Just the uh, veteran leadership behind that team. They've been there a little bit longer. Um, Piston signs Zaza Pachulia. He's an asshole. I, they're the Pistons. They'll probably make the playoffs with LeBron not being in the East anymore, but whatever, we digress and move on. They did sign to their summer league, Max Hooper. And for those of you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. So for those of you who don't know Max Hooper, he was he played at Oakland University, and uh, in his final season, he attempted 274 or something weird like that. Um shots for the entire season and they were all three pointers and i heard from someone he hit about 40 percent of them so that's not that bad that's not Um, bad at all but it was just it came across i'm like oh that's like the best basketball name anyone could have max hooper (laughs) gotta think about (laughs) some other uh great names in sports um there's a lot of them there i i googled this and i was like whoa (laughs) (laughs) like uh cecil fielder Oh. A uh, former Tiger great. I don't know. He was good. Very former Tiger good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Max Speedy. Yeah, he was an <laughs> NFL player. Played for the Cleveland Browns. Speedy is a receiver. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Scott Speed. NASCAR driver. 
That'd be great. <laughs> it's just the whitest name, too. <laughs> like, I want you to be really good at going fast. I'm just going to rename my last name Speed and call you Scott. I didn't know. There's no way this is a real person. Anna Smashnova. <laughs> <laughs> Tennis player. Kornikova. They na- renamed the... It's like uh, that radio show on ESPN. They talk about what are the best names in sports. And it's like... Uh, Dirk Notthinsky. I bet that's what that's part of. Um, Usain Bolt. Yes. That's a good one. Yes. Tiger Woods. Yes. Gary Player. Chip Beck. Okay. <coughs> you guys let us know what your favorite for name is. <laughs> yes, please. We could please. do this all night. <laughs> we could. Yeah, that's, yeah. Smashinova. I just saw it here. Yeah, that's, that's not good. In a Smashinova. <laughs> okay. Here they're stretching. Um, funny when translated. Derek Jeter, New York Yankees uh, shortstop. Jeter is French for to throw. Good, good job, guys. <laughs> that took way too much time and effort to be Somebody disappointed. Somebody got paid to do it. Someone we're not, did. We're not getting paid to read it. <laughs> we ain't getting paid, homie. <laughs> I found a penny in my way in. <laughs> money, money. Send it to the mixer fund. <laughs> um, so. Back to basketball. Um, I was sitting in uh, an account today um, doing an order, and the Big Three Basketball League was on Fox Sports. Um, It is kind of entertaining to watch. Um, First to 50, have to win by two. They have a four-point shot from three different spots in the court. It's half court, three on three. Um, Not everything's a foul. They actually play kind of physically. It's a lot of older guys. Um, they're out there giving 100% because they don't have to run up and down the entire court. Um, they only played a 50. It's no time. I mean, they can set up plays. And oh, yeah. It's, it's really entertaining. Um, and it's <coughs> come to Michigan, right? Yeah, this weekend, actually. Uh, they're going to be at Little Caesars Arena. Uh, tip-offs at 6 o'clock. <clears throat> There's four games. Uh, Trilogy versus Killer Threes. Uh, Ball Hogs versus Threes Company. Uh, three headed monster versus Tri State. As you can tell, there's kind of a theme going. Uh, then Ghost Ballers against Power, and I'm pretty sure I'm pulling up right now. Yeah, the Killer Threes uh, captain is Chauncey Billups. So nice. they nice. came in second last year. And I think the reason he didn't play like the last couple games because he was going through interviews for GM position oh, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So he kind of removed himself from it. But on his, I mean, look at these names. Chauncey Billups, Steven Jackson, Metal World Peace, Ron Artest, Josh Powell, Alan Anderson, Ryan Hollins, and Mike James, coached by Charles Oakley. How cool is that? That's no, really cool. I mean, the, the biggest thing about it, you get these names of these players that, I mean, we we grew up watching. That, that's, that's just it. These are players when we were little kids idolized. Yeah, and, and they're coming back and – They've been going on the NBA for years now, and they're mm-hmm. coming back, and it's just a name to attach to a team saying, hey, come watch these guys play basketball. Oh, by the way, Chauncey's going to be there. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Allen Iverson's going to be there. I mean, it's it's a really cool way to do it. It's a really cool way to get more people out there, um, especially having Chauncey back in Detroit. I mean, he's legendary for taking us to, to win a, the championship. Yeah, that's going to be huge. And it's cool. Like, they have a few uh, guys with Detroit ties. Um Rick Mahorn's in there as a coach. Mike James played for a couple of seasons with us. Kenny Mars from Saginaw, mm-hmm. he's playing in it. So it's just cool to see all these younger guys that, well, not young, older guys that still have a competitive edge, and they're still in a hell of a lot better shape than I'll ever be in. <laughs> uh, but just to see him playing and still out there. and I mean, they compete. It's not just like the NBA All-Star game where people just go up and down the st- <laughs> up and down the court, like, oh, hey, whatever happens, happens, you know. And that's no, a joke of an all-star game. Right. They're legit playing hard and taking it seriously and stuff. And I think it's cool. They go through, um, basically, Jason Max Steele's out here, too. That's why I didn't even know that. Um, they go through, uh, and last year they just did a blind draft. Um, they picked, like, a coach and a captain on every team and then kind of went through a draft. And then it was like, okay, you want to come back? You're going to stay on your team. Um, if not, um, good, congratulations, you know, you played for us, cool. And then they brought in some new players, and it was the same thing. All right, cool, you want to play? Cool, we're going to draft you. Because I think there's like 30 guys that wanted to do it, and there was like 10 spots available. So there's still more teams that could play. I think 
Ice Cube just being really smart and saying, hey, if I keep this so small for so long, eventually it'll blow up and we'll go from there. Because the group of guys he has together, I mean, it's a boozers playing it and stuff. So it's people our generation will remember watching growing up. So it's it's three and three basketball. Mm-hmm. There's, what, eight teams? Yep. There's eight teams, and it's always the same eight teams. Yep. It's always probably the same six guys probably in each team. Yeah, six, I think it's six to eight. Which six. is, I mean, that's... It's, it's very unique, and they all travel together. Yep. So they'll come to Detroit. All eight teams are there. They'll go to Atlanta. All mm-hmm. eight teams are there. That's actually really smart. Yeah. And it's you go in. I, I don't know what the cost is. I really wanted to go, but we had, we're going camping for my birthday this weekend. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, you go in. You get tickets to all the games, and the games are an hour, you know, a little over maybe, a little break in between. There's a four-point shot. It just it reminds you of – Growing up, playing three on three basketball on a half court and drawing three circles out there, be like, "Hey, you, you score from here, you get four points." Not that that's what everyone did, but it's a different aspect. <coughs> it keeps people interested in the game of basketball. You shoot it from the storm drain. That's five points. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was, man. <laughs> Off the house is three points. <laughs> yep. The three-headed monsters and Tri-State are tied for first at 3-0. They played, I think it's an eight-game season. Oh, 10, 10 this time. Or maybe that includes the playoffs. I pulled up the Wikipedia article. Okay. Wikipedia's oh, nice. not helping me a whole lot. No. You got – their site – Okay, so when they launched this like two years ago, I was super pumped for it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be sweet. Um, I went on their site, and it was just like black and coming soon, big three, and some random BS. The site they have now, man – you got tickets, scores, schedules, standing, stats, teams, recap, scores, news, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yada, yada, yada. So, I mean, it's it's a legit thing. I think it's going to catch on. Uh, we'll touch on this a little bit later, too. Um, NFL is getting into some flag football with some former players. So. Um, you know the commissioner of the, the league is right now for the big three? Oh. Clyde Drexler. Yeah. <laughs> I was I saw that summer. I had a uh, Clyde Drexler poster I got from... Like Little Caesars, I hung on my wall. I had no idea who Clyde Drexler <laughs> was when I was a kid. <laughs> but you had the poster. That's all that matters. I had the poster. He was playing for the the Blazers in the poster. That's funny. Oh, yeah. It's a cool concept. I don't know. In the summertime, but something to do. I don't know. It, it unfortunately, um, makes basketball relevant all year round now. I mean, I'm not as big of a basketball fan. I like the off-season of basketball, even though all the major sports networks always talk about basketball all year round. Oh, yeah. There's no off-season for it anymore. Um, but this is a fun way to keep people involved, fun way to make it not an off-season because it's something completely different in the mm-hmm. game of basketball. There's defense, it's half court, there's four-point shots, it's three-on-three. Three. It's so different and unique that it works. Exactly. It's not what LeBron James is eating for breakfast on <laughs> a Thursday in July. <coughs> oh, he flew in L.A. Which yeah. has been reported before. Yes, I promise it has. you that. It's it has. stupid. It's ridiculous. So, <coughs> all right. Well, Facebook, we're going to cut you off. Um, this episode will post on Wednesday. Um, coming up, so you guys know to stay tuned. We got Beer of the Podcast, stat slash facts of the podcast. Welcome back. Everyone knows what that music is. It's Beer the Podcast time. What you got there, man? Right Brain, Luminous Lemon. Oh, this is the best time of the week, I tell you. <laughs> the only time of the week Adam drinks. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right. So, Luminous Lemon from Right Brain is a cream ale uh, made with lemon je- zest and lemon juice. Um, it's really got that crisp lemonade taste without the overall sweetness yes. not too sugary or anything um it's a lemon that everybody's looking for right if the pirates had this they wouldn't have got scurvy exactly what yeah if you <laughs> scurvy you take vitamin c oh that's yeah. vitamin c in lemons. Yeah. okay 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 i got you <laughs> <laughs> nerd <laughs> leave me alone man <laughs> anyways uh it's really just light refreshing it's perfect if it, you've been here in Michigan the last couple of days and it's been like 97,000 degrees outside, um, you can still drink them, not overfilling, don't make your teeth hurt from sugar or anything. So shout out to Russell, Tim, and Zach, the whole right brain crew. 
Um, great liquid. Keep making it. 16 ounce cans, draft, statewide. Great stuff. Keep it up. Cheers to Right Marine. Keep beer curious. Cheers. <laughs> Prost. <laughs> That feels so good on my throat. <laughs> this is like a a warm honey tea. <laughs> Minus the honey or the tea. So at halftime, <laughs> after I hacked up the first half, my wife comes down and goes, Hey, sir, hacks a lot. <laughs> so like, Not only you... was she referring to your golf game, but also... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Got you good. You are so proud of yourself right now. That's a joke from when I'm proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know how I golf. She stopped golfing me a while ago. Well, riding along while I golf. When you have kids, she stays away now. So she doesn't know. I'm good. Two handicap. <laughs> plus you tell seven. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, Sad news in the world of booze. Lately. Yes, exactly. Um, the other half of the uh, Barton um, Barrel House collapsed. Pour, pour one out just down on my floor. Yeah, I'll pour one out into my throat. Here's to all my homies in the barrel house. Right. So I forgot the numbers. I wish I saved them what I calculated last time. It was hundreds of thousands and millions of fifths, basically, what they lost. And they just lost that all again. So but apparently, like, a bunch of fish died in the area. You could smell booze from miles and miles away. So, yeah, I mean, I want to go take a barrel. <laughs> Again, <laughs> road trip. <laughs> Take a quick trip down to Kentucky tomorrow. Right. Um, yeah, a bunch of the bourbon got in the river, and the fish apparently can't survive on bourbon. Unlike, unlike you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's thousands of fish that died, um, millions of dollars lost. Just depressing. It is. This is just yeah. a follow up story on our last sad story. About <laughs> right? Bourbon. Got nothing else. It's sad. Um, we might have to have a bourbon in the podcast soon. You know, bur- I was reading about this story, actually. Bourbon Month is in September, and I was seriously thinking we need to do all our September podcasts be bourbon barrel beers and then add a bourbon of the podcast to each of them as well. I'm going to have to spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> Done. I got a couch. <laughs> Ask Jake. He's Jake. comfy. <laughs> I was like, oh, he Jake. can bring some cheese blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get him to laugh again. I am, I swear. Oh, oh man. So speaking of your hack job of the <laughs> golf game, how's that going for you lately? It's a hack job. <laughs> so we played out of our minds. This was, what, three weeks ago now to get into the championship round. And we kept up with them. Um, the guys we were playing with played really, really well as well. Um, hats off to those dudes. Uh, but we couldn't keep up. Uh, came down to the, the last two holes. I screwed up eight and Gavin hit it over on nine. Unfortunately, third straight, second place finish. Getting a little tired of that, but eh, it is what it is. Uh, we'll be back at it starting on Thursday. And yeah, try and just keep on keeping on and not screw up as much and get to that championship match for the entire league. So had some steaks though that night. Beers. It was a good day. It's a rough Friday for Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Most Fridays are. Well, keep practicing up because we got that golf outing coming up. We in do. August. I, I will be there um, ready for to do some 12 ounce curls. <laughs> it's on a Saturday this year, not a Sunday. So sweet recovery day, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Money. Those are the best days. Recovery. <laughs> oh, they're not the best days, but it makes the day before even better. Um, Speaking of golf. So imagine yourself in the year <coughs> 2007. Kay. Two of the finest golfers in the world decide to go on a uh, um, this wild excursion together and golf 18 holes, put $10 million in the line. Wouldn't that be great TV? What if I told you it was Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson? Oh, man, I'm glued to the TV. I'm paying pay-per-view to get it. Now imagine it's 2018. Yeah. <laughs> None of them have hardly any sponsorships left. And Tiger Woods has already gotten beat up by his wife with a golf club. He's been in and out of rehab 17 times. And Phil Mickelson's a drunk that can't keep the sponsorship around. Still want to watch it? Because I do. As long as it's <laughs> on basic cable. <laughs> That's what we're looking at here, buddy. Yeah, it's... I hope... I The rumors I've heard about the $10 million is it 
going to be sponsorship money that eventually goes to a charity, which is good. Well, oh, yeah, completely great cause. Have yeah. I said anything different than people stop watching? The show <laughs> I know, right, right, right. No, you're no, completely right. It's a great cause and everything. I get it. I think you would see more fight from those guys. I'm sure there will be because there will still be bragging rights. But if each of them put five mil on the table and the winner literally just took it home and sat on it. I don't think Tiger's got five mil left. He's got so much money. No. Never, Rolex never. money, baby. That's the so, only sponsor I could find that they both shared. Yeah. So, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Rolex throw down. He was $10 million. <laughs> yeah. They're going to do some of it. And I'm excited for it. I'm going to watch it either way. Apparently, it almost happened uh, last weekend. They were both in Vegas, and they almost just said, screw it, let's go. Uh, it didn't end up working out, but... It's in the talks. Um, talks are heating up, getting it finalized. But I guess w- at this point, it's kind of wait and see. I I think when this happens, we need to do a live podcast. I think that's a great idea. I also think this opens up a door to a whole other realm of sports. I mean, if you're going, there is now a, there's at least a minor league baseball stadium in Nevada. Mm-hmm. Um, there's plenty of golf courses. There is a hockey rink. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not a football field yet, but there will be They're soon. Building one. Why can't two um, non-professional teams come together and say, "Hey, here's ten million from us. Here's ten million from you. Winner gets pot." It's just like boxing. Yeah. In a way. Why not? I think this, I mean, I think this is a great idea. I mean, <coughs> golf is an easy start because, mm-hmm. I mean, shoot, we go out and say, I bet you five bucks, I beat you on this hole. Right. That, that, with these guys being mic'd up, that's what I'd like to see what happens. Are they going to let them, is that part of the negotiation of, hey, 10 grand, you miss, make, make, yeah, 10 grand, you miss this putt? It's like Caddyshack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what it is. And I think that'd be really cool to have. And, like, yeah, any sport should do it. Why not? No, it's. That brings a whole other realm to sports. I mean, sports make so much money off of us as fans. Mm-hmm. Why can't they make money off each other? Exactly. I think that'd be so entertaining. Their egos are so big. They already compete, you know, on the level they do with the 160 other golfers every weekend. Why not <coughs> make it the two of them put their money on the line and see what happens? Hell, that big three basketball. Yeah. Every game they say, here's $500,000. From each team. Mm-hmm. Winner takes home an extra 500 grand. Oh, yeah. That'd be fantastic. I mean, they play a lot harder. and I mean, not that they don't play hard in that. Right. But it'd be a lot more entertaining for the for the fans to watch when mm-hmm. they know that there's money actually on the line. For sure. Same thing with this. I mean, yeah, it's going to bring Tiger and Phil back out of the dark ages and back in the, the spotlight. Oh, which yeah. Which is good for them. Um, but this is... This could be a a revolution in sports. Do you remember this? I believe it was two or three years ago. I think I talked about this a couple episodes ago, too. Uh, It was Rory and Ricky were planning a primetime golf one-on-one match in Detroit. Yep. That's what this needs to be. This could be the start of it. Yeah. It it has to be primetime, though. And I don't care where you go. You go anywhere, you're going to have enough people giving you enough money you can put lights on the course if you need to. You hit the ball straight enough, we know where it's going anyways. Let's get real. Um, <coughs> but I think it's it's a start. I, I'm excited to see it. I hope it works out. Um, yeah, I, I'm i going to watch. I'm glued to this story until a date set. So. Um, I'm excited. I don't typically watch golf, but. Th- that's just it. For me. This, you're going to get so many people that, just like you, who. I watch pretty much every golf tournament. Okay, I watch a golf tournament while I'm laying on the floor playing with Jameson. It's just <laughs> on in the back. I'm not sitting there taking stats or anything, but I do like watching it. Um, but this is going to be bringing in that fringe golf fan. To all of a sudden, think, oh, Phil and Tiger, $10 million? Prime time on a Saturday night? Well, I'm going to watch that. Yep. Absolutely. I, it, yeah, it's a great idea. Be the first uh, golf match I don't fall asleep watching. <laughs> Depends how drunk you get. First golf match, I might not fall asleep watching. <laughs> um, speaking of outdoing one another, um, Travis Pastrana recently um, 
yesterday. Yesterday? Was it? Yesterday the day before. Yeah, it was Saturday or Sunday. Um, he was out in Vegas, and he was uh, out doing Evil Knievel mm-hmm. by attempting the tricks that he that Evil himself failed at mm-hmm. and got very, very injured at at times. Um, one being that he jumped over 52 cars. Yep. Um, another being he uh, jumped 16 buses. Mm-hmm. And the fountain. Fountain. Was it the Bruh, Caesars? Caesar's Palace, that's right. Yep. yep. Um, and he did it. And he was all dressed up in, in evil Knievel ish <laughs> garb. Um, I mean, it, in one way, it was paying homage to him. In another way, it was putting himself in the record books because uh, evil tried to do one thing. He increased it by a car or by mm-hmm. a bus or by an extra 20 feet, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And evil failed at all three, and he succeeded all three. So. On one hand, it was a slap in the face to Evil Knievel. On the other hand, it was like, thanks for attempting these, but look what I can do. Right. <laughs> but Evil was doing it on a really heavy motorcycle, and uh, Travis was doing it on a brand new st- <laughs> state-of-the-art. <laughs> it wasn't the, the same Indian motorcycle <laughs> no. Evil Knievel was driving no. by any means. <laughs> it was not like a 82 <laughs> Indian motorcycle. Or no. Like it was. No. It, I mean, it's cool to see. Um, for the guy's those, a freak, man. Oh yeah, Travis Pastrana is a freak. I remember watching him growing up. Like, I think he was always wearing yellow and all his bike races and everything. But he's he's beyond motorcycles. He's also r- racing in uh, NASCAR. He does rally car. He's just done um, truck racing, motocross, supercross, X Games, anything with a motor. Exactly. It, it's just cool to see those guys. <coughs> testing their literally life limits. So they have more cojones than I do. Yeah, well, he's got a lot of money too, so <laughs> he can afford the surgery. Right. <laughs> and all the practice and the foam pits. That that's the one thing that would be cool. Let, I'll go jump on one of those motorcycles across all those cars. That's fine. Just give me a big old foam pit <laughs> to land in. I'll be, oh man, I'm game. It's not a concrete slab. <laughs> no. Crazy. All right. Oh, uh, so it's been a while um, since we talked about football, and it's getting to the time where we're going to talk more and more football. We're thank God a month away from preseason. There's oh, what was it that I heard? Eight more weeks without football? No, less than less than that. Yeah, eight more weeks till the, I think the regular season. I think it's three weeks. So yeah, because the Hall of Fame game is mid August. So, but anyways, <coughs> uh, Cam Chancellor uh, played his <coughs> last game in the NFL. Uh, he decided to retire, uh, citing safety concerns. Um, and my take is that it, I don't blame him one bit. I mean, he came in, he made a ton of money. He was able to sign big contracts, endorsement deals, um, win the Super Bowl, Pro Bowler, probably a Hall of Famer. Um, he did everything he needed to do. Right. He did everything he needed to do, and <coughs> his body was still in good enough shape. Um, and with all the reports coming out now about uh, former NFL players and even college football players that they have head trauma and they've got yeah. existing injuries and nothing goes away and then they're constantly, their ears are ringing, mm-hmm. just whatever it might be. If he's still in good shape, why the hell not retire? He's got a Super Bowl. Exactly. He's got a Pro Bowl. He's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's got all his money. Um, he wasn't stupid with his money. That, that's the thing, too, is you can tell when these guys are retiring this early, they're looking at, like, hey, I was financially responsible and mature enough to put money away so I can retire early. And if I'm 29 and I'm still healthy, I can walk away and be set for the rest of my life. Calvin Johnson, Barry Sanders, Marshawn Lynch, just to name a few. I mean, Patrick Willis, B.J. Raji, Jay Clogger. I mean, it's they, they did what they needed to do, and, <coughs> yeah, they, they gave us some entertainment, and they got a lot of kickback from it. Um, it's The NFL has turned into a league of how hard can I hit that guy? Mm-hmm. And there's all these safety rules around it, but it's still it's, at the end of the day. What you learn, at least what I learned when I was growing up playing football, I learned proper form, and I learned how to hit somebody, how to tackle somebody without hurting myself. Um, yeah, it might hurt them, but not intentionally. 
Now it's all about a safety coming across the middle, taking out a receiver, mm -hmm. big hit, cause a fumble. That guy ends up, I mean, these are professional athletes out there. They weigh 200 pounds. They can run a 4 or 5 40. Yeah. Um, it's, it's unreal. It's mm -hmm. absolutely unreal. I mean, they're freaks of nature hitting each other as hard as they can for an entire football game 16 times a year, and then you go in the playoffs where everything matters. So you're going to do it even harder. I mean, it's 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 stupid. So <coughs> you can't blame these guys for wanting to retire. I mean, especially when all. they've got very successful careers and they realize, you know, this isn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. What do you do after football? Football, I mean, once you play football, you made it. You don't, yeah. you don't become – there's – not always, but there's very few times you go from a football player to a a coach to a an owner. That very and, rarely happens. Yeah, and a lot of those coaches that are former football players are they didn't play very long. They weren't very good. Exactly. They're tight ends, they're backup quarterbacks, they're backup wide receivers, backup D backs. It's never the star of the show, the number one quarterback or the number one D back that ends up going and do does those things. So <coughs> I don't blame the dude at all. I mean, I wake up every morning and don't have to worry about not walking. Yep. So to He's have that in the back of your mind every Sunday going out, being like, hmm, I might not wake up tomorrow. I might, or I might Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the other day, you, you might. Human projectiles jumping at me from all sides. I might die today. Running as fast as they can, hitting me as hard as they can. You're literally getting a car accident every Sunday. Yep. It's... Grown men with bullets on their heads, essentially. Mm -hmm. No, good for him for walking away. Um, like we said, Calvin Johnson, Patrick Willis, Marshawn Lynch. The list goes on. Bring more and more people preparing for this part. Bring back the leather helmets, man. Right. There'd be a lot less injuries. With leather helmets. I know. They, I I wonder that sometimes. Like all we do is pad and pad and pad and pad. And pad. What if you were like, hey, no pads? You ever watch a rugby game? Oh, a rugby I match. Oh gosh. They are humongous human beings, and they're still tackling the hell out of each other, but yeah. there's never any injuries no, because they do it right. Exactly, exactly. So it, it's one of those things where do you change the rule or do you change how it's done? you got to change how it's done, and there's so many perspectives on this. Like You can go to shooting free throws. Everyone's freaking out. Oh, the hack-a-shack rule, we need to outlaw that. Why doesn't he just learn to make free throws? Yep. Then you don't got to worry about it. It's the same thing. Like, it, if it gets to a point of people not playing football, well, then we're all going to learn how to hit and tackle properly, and that'll solve the problem right there. There's more and more kids. I, I mean, in a way, there's more and more parents not having their kids play <coughs> football growing mm -hmm. up because of the dangers involved. Um, because they see it at the upper level. Even though their coaches may be teaching them the right way, they see it at the upper level. That right. Hey, these guys are getting hurt on a daily basis. Look how painful that is. Look mm -hmm. how much abuse they go through. Their bodies, that the, the abuse they go through. Yeah. And so the kids aren't playing. I mean, in one hand, that's helping soccer succeed in the, exactly. in the U.S. On the other hand, I mean, that's that's the most profitable sport in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it's going away. And yeah. something has to change mm -hmm. drastically. And on one hand, yeah, we're trying to make all these safety precautions. These helmets are safer. They can... They can withstand X amount of G-force, and it's mm -hmm. better for the brain. Um, these pads are bigger, and they're softer, and it's going to absorb the blow from the hits, but that's just causing people to hit harder. Right. That's it. Like, at what point do you retract to where we were 15, 20 years ago? Take the airbags and seatbelts away. <coughs> exactly. And that goes with two rules. What the hell's a catch? <laughs> no one knows what it is, but that's it. Like, we have made it so complicated then no one knows, so why not? All right, cool. We're going to take everything back to the way it was in 20 years ago when we were still growing and becoming more and more profitable. Move the field goal post back out front. <laughs> That's a pretty <laughs> obvious one I don't think I'd do. <laughs> but that at some point, either you're going to start losing players or you're going to have to start looking at the game differently. And I think it's going to be in our lifetime. I think we've hit the tipping point. We're losing way too many yeah. players. We we saw the spike. The spike was here two, three years ago, we'll say, of football and people playing it and getting excited about it. I think it. it was longer than that. Wait, okay. I longer. absolutely think it was longer than that. Longer than that. But 
we, we plateaued and we're about to start going downhill. If not, we've already started going downhill. And the NFL needs to realize that and find out what they need to do to stop it. Because realistically, I'd say in our lifetime, maybe there's no NFL. Very possible. Or it's definitely not the game it is right now. Bring back the XFL. <laughs> LFL? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those girls are jacked. I want to see people who hit each other hard. Holy crap. Right? They have very little padding on. They just don't <laughs> care. Oh, man. Uh, speaking of the NFL and rules, uh, the NFL just added, uh, this was last week, uh, 15-yard penalty for grounds crew clearing snow for a field goal. So basically, if it's snowing and you're the home team, because I doubt the away team will actually go out there and do this. Um, but anyways, if it's snowing and you go line up for a field goal, a grounds crew cannot come onto the field and clear your spot. Now, the only thing I thought about this, I saw this, I think it's a great rule, play it how it lies type rule. Um, what if the grounds crew came out, cleared the spot where the kicker was currently placed, and you see a dude 15 yards back clearing the spot? Do you move him 30 yards back? <laughs> and then you get the 15 yard penalty. You're at a fi- you're at a 20 yard field goal. You gotta go 15 yards back. You're at 35 yard, yard field goal, and your ground's clear. Eh? Gray area. <laughs> <laughs> Heard it here first. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> huh. I I, uh, I I was reading this article the other day about it, and I'm like, oh, that's a really good rule. You know, play it as it lies. It'll save time. Yada yada yada. And then I'm like, wait a second. Like, thinking the Phil thing with the putter. Oh, hey, well, if you're through a putt way too far, it makes sense to hit it in and, you know, get those two-stroke penalties. So why not? Hey, I'm going to take the 15-yard penalty, but when I'm shoveling off this, you know, little spot, I'm going to shovel off the one 15 yards further back. That's... <laughs> you're like... Man, my, I don't know what to say. You're speechless. <laughs> huh. You know? That's... Uh, I'm sure there's some fine print that they didn't post that you can't do that, but... Yeah, I mean... I'm glad they're assessing the metal mix. I think it should be fair yeah. all the way around. Everyone else has run the snow. Yeah. Because, you know, when Atlanta comes up to Buffalo, they didn't bring snow shovels with them, but mm-hmm. Buffalo's got them ready. Of course they Exactly. Do. Throw snow on Atlanta. Huh. Huh. That's what you should do. If they go up to clear <laughs> the snow, the opposing team should be allowed 30 seconds to throw as much <laughs> snow on as they want. Yes. I'm, I'm in. I'm but, all in on but that. But the offensive line can still <laughs> block all the snowballs. <laughs> I'm all in on that. Or or um, you get two extra players out there, so you get 13 players, and they're on the end. They can't cross the line of scrimmage. They just have to throw snowballs at the kicker while he's trying to kick. <laughs> now we're getting gimmicky. <laughs> That'd be fun. But I like it. That'd be really fun. But that's where the NFL is going to go. Why not? Snowball fights. Yeah. <laughs> And flag football. All right. All right. <laughs> Your boy Johnny. Johnny Manziel. I you feel like him. every time we're done talking about him, this has a It's f- funny. We did our last episode and I was going through our notes and I think it was the very first episode we did, which was the worst thing we've ever done. I don't even think I have notes on it. It was so oh yeah, here it is. Uh Baker oh no, that's Baker Mayfield. I don't think we've ever talked about no, Johnny Manziel. Baker Mayfield's girlfriend's really good. Yeah. Looking, remember? But we don't like Baker Mayfield. I don't like Johnny Manziel either. I don't either. But that just proves they're the same. Like, we Baker think Mayfield's of them as the, the new same. Johnny Manziel. Yeah. And I just proved it to everyone, not, not unintentionally. So intentionally. No, I said unintentionally. You said, not, never mind. You said not unintentionally. But <laughs> I was holding a cough. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Johnny's up in uh, the Great White North, eh? Playing some Canadian football, eh? With those goofy, uh, <laughs> goofy posts, eh? Um, and he is not starting. Um, he is sitting on the bench behind Jeremiah Masoli. <laughs> uh, he played for Oregon and Mississippi, went undrafted in 2011, 
And now he has tied a record for most consecutive 300-yard passing games in CFL history with nine in a row, which isn't great for NFL, but for CFL, it's not bad. However, his worst game of the season, 332 yards, but he threw three touchdowns in that game. Hmm. Um, the dude's on fire, but we're talking about Johnny Manziel. Who cares about the guy that's actually doing well? I love how we still talk about Johnny Manziel. <laughs> <coughs> it's it's the Johnny Manziel effect. It's the cockiness attitude he had, how he had the media wrapped around his finger in college, and he was this rich boy story, drafted way too early, and we need something to follow in the summer. Because we're in the <laughs> we sports do. broadcasting industry now. <laughs> <laughs> we're not broadcasting yet. Oh, we're, we're broadcasting to four people. <laughs> but we're broadcasting. <laughs> and there goes Matt laughing. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. On to better Everybody, news. I apologize for this episode, Adams. I ridiculous amount of coughing. I I we need cough. I'm so sorry. It's it's out of control. Inexcusable. Childish. You want we could go do this outside in the ninety degree heat, then I won't cough. I sweat all over my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um so uh our homeboy Kirk Cousins. More football controversy. This isn't really controversy. Well not to us, but well no, because we knew what it was. Um Kirk Cousins on Instagram posted a picture, said, Happy 4th, America, Pure Michigan. Uh, and it's his grill with some good old meat on there overlooking. It's got to be one of the Great Lakes. I don't see that being an inland lake. Um, probably up uh, Frankfurt area. Uh, anyways, <laughs> it grew a bunch of controversy because the meat just looked, quote, weird to other people. Um Everyone's saying, uh, looks like puke chuck, looks like elk, um, what is that, what are you eating, looks like liver, I got liver like a ton of time. Um, anyways, <coughs> we'll, we'll break the news right now, it was venison. Mm, venison. Mm, it's, it's one of the delicacies of anyone in the Midwest, really. I love venison. So, love it, love it, love it. Stop freaking out, he wasn't eating liver. He's I eating also love liver. Really? Oh yeah. I don't. I actually don't think I've ever had liver. I'll make some good liver sometime. Okay. It used to be my drunk food in college. We come back from the bar. I'd fry up some liver and onions. Oh man, nothing better. It's got lots of iron in it, so I think that helps with hangovers. <laughs> that was my excuse for oh, making liver. You did it like when I was in college. Taco Bell or I, no Jimmy John's? I was walking distance to the bar, so I just walked home and fried up some liver. Got all the free beef liver I wanted. Great side story, everybody. <laughs> All the free liver I wanted, so that's what I fried up when I was drunk in college. <coughs> I ate Taco Bell and got <laughs> Jimmy John's delivered. <laughs> I like remember a normal college person. Yeah, like we were I went to CMU in Mount Pleasant, Central Michigan University of Fire Up Ships, holla at your boy word. Um <laughs> anyways, I remember walking home from the bar up Mission not uh, Mission, uh Broadway. No. I can't remember the name of it you now. Went to school there, not me. Yeah, I had ten years ago I went to school there. Anyways, walking up the road and see the gym. I called Jimmy John as soon as I left the bar. Like, all right, be like 45 minutes. I was like, perfect. That gives me enough time to walk back. Uh, I'm walking up, walking up. All of a sudden, I see the Jimmy John's car drive by. I'm like, oh, that'd be funny if that's my sub. Roommate calls me five minutes later. You order Jimmy John's? Yeah, you owe me 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, my bad. <laughs> I, I, it's funny. I'm walking up there with my girlfriend at the time, who's not my wife. And I'm like, oh, I should wave him down. She's like, don't do that. Don't be embarrassed yourself. I'm like, oh, I'm drunk, so who cares? But <laughs> yeah, I'm already embarrassing myself. <laughs> right? I'm walking public hammered. So anyway, Kirk Cousins is eating venison. <laughs> and uh, he got some flack in social media for it, right? Yep. Why? Because to other people, it doesn't look like steak, I guess. <sighs> people are ridiculous. I mean, if you don't know what Venice, I mean, it looks a little different, but I, it looks good. It looks perfectly cooked, actually. Mm. Eat it with my hands. 
Oh, don't burn yourself. So staying on the football train, <laughs> football, 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 football is all we know right now. Um, the it's American Flag Football League, um, this league that uh, it, the teams aren't in yet, right? Did it start already? Yeah, it started. So there's 128 teams from seven regions throughout the United States. These 128 teams play off, yada, yada. <coughs> Oh, and, man, yeah, they're almost in the end yeah, already. Yeah, and there's one champion for those 128 unprofessional football player teams, and that one champion gets to play the one champion from the four professional team leagues or teams. Um, so there's four former professional football players or four teams of former professional football players that are currently playing. Um, Ocho Cinco and... Godspeed. I don't know who's on that team. <coughs> but anyways, the they, name of the team is Godspeed. That's what it says. Oh, it's pretty ballsy. Yeah. Uh anyways, so it's fighting cancer against the money team uh for the they call the kind of like average Joe's section of the bracket. Then it's Ocho versus Godspeed for the professional um part of the bracket. So the winners of those two games will play each other in Houston at 8 o'clock on July 19th. Uh, it's straight up flag football. Javid Best is playing for Team Ocho. He had a sick catch the other day. Did he get a concussion? <laughs> Surprisingly not. Oh, weird. <coughs> Must not be playing for the Lions anymore. First time ever <laughs> he played football without getting a concussion. Um, but anyways, it's one of those things that goes back to the big three. Um, you've seen older, retired players or, or players like Javid Best who had some injuries and couldn't make the NFL um, out there playing, having fun for a good cause. Uh, yeah, I I just ran into the, the post today on it. Um, I'm going to pay attention to it as much as I can over the next couple of days. Um, it looks like the uh, championship between... The average guys and the pros guys are on Saturday starting at 4. And uh, five days to prepare for each other uh, in Houston. That's pretty, it's really cool. I mean, it's one yeah. of those things. It's, it's still football, <coughs> but it's so different. That right. And it keeps a lot more people and, enthralled. Right. And little things like this and the, uh, the big three, I, they're only a couple of weeks. It's not super intensive to get into. It's just more like, hey, it's something to watch. When it's 95 outside, you want something to do, and you can only watch the reruns of Seinfeld so many times on Netflix. <laughs> it sounds like it comes from a personal experience. Dude, Seinfeld's so funny. I don't like I Seinfeld. Oh, I, don't. I was never a Seinfeld man. I don't like you. I like Seinfeld better than uh, Frasier. For, yeah. Frasier was stupid. Frasier's too serious. Cheers is number one for me. Oh, fuck Cheers. Cheers. My second time through the... Sorry, Nice. <sighs> so anyways, ooh, hold on here. The Tiger scoring update. <coughs> so on Wednesday, we can know where the Tigers are at 9.30 at night on Sunday, or Monday. So um, They are still down 7-4 to four against the Rays, top of the seventh inning. Sweet. What about Hank Aaron? <laughs> Hank Aaron, a random stat and fact of the podcast. Um <clears throat> Hank Aaron's illustrious 23-year career, he slugged 755 home runs and for a long time was the leader of home runs. If you take those 755 home runs away from him, he still had over 3,000 hits in the MLB, which is absolutely incredible. Um, the numbers don't lie, everybody. Hank Aaron was a great player, an amazing player, and if he wasn't a power hitter, he'd still have three, over 3,000 hits. So, uh, go Hank. That's a random stat of the podcast. Is that what you named your dog after? Um, <laughs> no. Actually, we couldn't think of a dog name, and Shana came across Hank. <laughs> and uh, I was like, Hank, that's a good name for a dog. And I originally named him after Hank Greenberg, but then Hank Aaron came up too. and <coughs> So he's a baseball dog. That's, nice. That's the moral of the story. Cool. All right, uh, one little soccer note real quick. We're going to touch on the World Cup on our next episode because then we can just wrap up the entire World It'll Cup. It'll be over, but then U.S. isn't in it, so nobody cares yeah. until they win. At least we don't have any international listeners yet. So. Right. 
Uh, two things. Neymar challenge is awesome. Get out there, do it, share your videos. I'm gonna try and get Matt to do it this week. And number two, uh, the soccer players stuck in the cave. As of this morning, there's only four kids in the coach left. Uh, they're going under, ev um, evacuating them from the cave, uh, underwater diving. I saw the greatest thing uh, last night on the news channel. Uh, they actually showed the cave, and they actually have to swim up. Um, and they have, like, little areas they can get air. And then they, there's, like, one point where they have to do, like, a mile and a half underwater in, like, Berkey water. Yep. Um, so kudos to those dudes doing it. Hope everyone gets out safe. Yeah, and the two divers that end up finding them are... Um, they have their own professional lives, and what on their <laughs> in their spare time, they're safety divers yeah. and rescue divers. It, initially, they thought they might be there till October. Um, could be by the end of the week, everyone's home and safe, which That's is good. Fantastic, yeah, good story. Um, oh, but um, if you're ever coaching a youth sports team, <laughs> don't, don't go cave, cave exploring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting into that. that, that, I, that I don't want to ruffle any I'm sure others. that coach so feels bad enough. Yeah, yeah. He's only 25, so. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's all we got for you today. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can always reach us by email, mattmuse at gmail.com. Call or text us, 989-372-1391. Or on Facebook, Instagram, at Twitter, Matt and Muse. Uh, you can also go to mattmuse.com. Uh, contact page there. Um, we'll get some sponsorship information out here shortly. Um, yeah. Thanks See for listening. Ya.